Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and Murloc mains Chogol champions, Samur Super Samuros, uh, Sexy Flanders. Welcome back, everyone. We're in our third best of three of the day. We are in the lower bracket semifinal. After this is the lower bracket final, and then after that is the grand finals, and then after that, I'm going to make some hot wings. Not on stream, though. Y'all don't get any. Sorry. All the wings are for me, because I'm going to have mac and cheese. Anyways, Alterac Pass is the first map in this uh, third best of three of the day. We are going to be seeing uh, Swedish Pensioners versus Vinland Raiders. And this will be a substitute of Cure for the Swedish Pensioners. Wow, can Billy Shark... Can Billy Shark... Can Gilly Shark at Bingo Night use Cure as a sub when Kaimo is tired? We would gladly if NGS rules were in butts about the subs. Oh. I don't know the NGS rules about subs. Peck em. In Korea, they sell package of bananas in different stages of ripeness so you can eat one a day. Oh. Susborn, that's amazing. Dude, Korea's, Korea's got it going on. That is, that's a bucket list country for me to go visit. Korea and Japan. I want to go to those two places so bad. Korea, Japan, and Northern Europe. I've like, not not that like Central Europe's bad or anything like that, but I've been to Spain twice. I've been to Germany a couple times. I've been to Romania a bunch. Uh, I've been to France. And I haven't been to a lot of like Northern Europe and stuff. So I just, I feel like it'd be beautiful. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and get this back over there. So, let's do our spiel, everybody. We ready to go? Spiel time. Alterac Pass is our first map for the Banshee Cup qualifier number two. Day number two, lower bracket semifinal. Uh, heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps as this, as this is the Meta Madness style of draft. So, Blaze will not be available for future maps in this best of three. When we get to the next best of three, the lower bracket final, all heroes will be up and available as there are no tournament baseline bans. So all 90 heroes are available. Now, if you're like, wait a minute, Bubba Hamid, but there's bands at the top of the screen, that's okay. Those only pertain to the map draft. So in map number two, or potentially map number three, we could see a Hogger, Hogger we could see a Lucy, we could see a Maya, we could see a Rhaegar, if they are not banned away. But it's only heroes that are picked in play are unavailable for future maps. Now, let's do the other portion of our spiel. If you're watching here on Twitch, be sure to follow the stream. You get yourself another streamer in your repertoire. I stream six days a week. We average six hours per stream. We do a lot of fun content here. We've got cooking streams, painting streams, which we will actually do both of those next week. We've got some fun streams, like Resident Evil 4 Remake, so it's a good time here. Last but not least, our good friends over on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube channel a little bit more. If, if we make it to 1,000 subs, we can make some extra scratch for Bandit. And more money is always good for the good puppy that is Bandit. And last but not last at all is going to be uh, that we do have added time to all of our VODs so that way there's spoiler-free additional time. Sorry, I said that backwards. Either way, spoiler-free additional time is added to every single VOD, so all best of threes will be an hour and a half, all best of fives will be two and a half hours, regardless of how many maps it goes. That way you can't look at the time signature and be like, oh yeah, a best of five in an hour and a half, that's like three maps. So yeah, no. You're gonna have uh, additional time. So if you're sitting on YouTube and you're like, wait a minute, there's only 40 minutes of content in this video. That's because it's spoiler-free additional time. You might be sitting in chat being like, why is he clarifying this? Because people in YouTube don't understand that apparently. So we gotta say it every time now. Genji will be the ban away in the mid phase as we do have our first half of the draft picked up for these two teams. Diablo, Brightwing on the left-hand side, Blaze, Bird, and Hanzo on the right. What do they want to put Cure on? Things like uh, Dahaka are up and available, so we could see a Dahaka pickup here. I don't hate the idea of a secondary global. We'll be Malthiel instead with a Junkrat on top of that. Okay. Uh, so is it Hyper Carry Junkrat? No, I think they're gonna try and pick up something else. You know what wouldn't be too bad? A Falstad. Falstad wouldn't be too bad, honestly. Good poke potential around the objective. Armor debuff, which then um, Junkrat can play off with some of the spell damage. Okay, in response, we've got a Deckard Kane. 
seem to be, uh, I mean, you're warmed up on it after that last game, so I can't blame Hunter Orc for that. And then a Sylvanas picked up as well. Good siege potential to, or excuse me, good siege amplification from her. She also has the Mercenary Queen at level 4 if she wants to use the Null Pack camp, but I don't think it will be that. We've seen a lot of possession to bolster the waves, so it'll probably be that. Last pick on the side of uh, Swedish Pensioners. What are we going to get for our Passion of Max? No rule here says you have to take a full bunch. You can just grab individual bananas at varying ripest levels. Yeah, that's true. But I, uh, I always feel guilty when like there's the, the like the big like cluster of bananas and I rip like three of them off. I always feel so guilty. <laughs> I don't know why. It must be from Catholic school. All right. Into the map we go. Start prediction. Which team wins? Alterac pass. Okay. Let's introduce our teams and all that fun stuff. Left side of Alterac pass. Make playing Brightwing for the members of the Swedish Pensioners. We've got a Cure Zeratul, Skog on uh, Diablo. G will play your Junkrat, and last but not least, Max Passion on the Malfiel. Welcome uh, over on the right-hand side. Sorry about that. Brains all over the place today. Twice will be your Muradin. Hunter Orc on this Deckard. Sven is Blaze, Hopaka Sylvanas, and Nano on Hanzo. What is CM in front of some of their names? What team was that? Chili Mountain. Chili Mountain, Granite Game. Uh, I think that's all. Oh, Sven, what are we doing over here, bud? Going on a bit of an adventure, huh? Uh-oh, Skog? Did you see that slight turn from Sven? He's like, I ain't getting wall banged, but I, he's going to die. Hanzo takes down the uh, the Malfiel. So there is going to be a trade. Zeratul sticking to Hunter Orc like butter. Wait, nope. Like hot cheese on a cheeseburger. Oh, that's not a good one either. Well, anyways, with a couple kills being had, let's go ahead and start our prediction. Which team's going to win Alterac Pass Chat? Get your gambles in. I used to feel that same guilt, but in, uh, but in my age, I just let it go as long as I don't break the peels. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always try and rip from the top where they're all, like, clustered together. So that way I'm only, like, breaking the stem, if you will. Uh, that's not even the right word. I don't know what you call the top of a banana. I guess it would be a stem, huh? Thank you, Ash Mantle. All right, the, uh, the Swedish Pensioners versus uh, Vinland Raiders here on map number one, second, uh, third best of three of the day. Junkrat able to back away. That's a huge jet propulsion into a massive scroll of ceiling, but no kill as Gia gets a phase shift from Brightwing uninterrupted. It's all, it's all cure Zeratul believers in chat, huh? Hey, we got 500 on the Vinland Raiders. We got odds. It is hard to bet against a Cure Zeratul. I, I, I do gotta say that. It's a little hard to bet against that one. We have a Muradin Third Wind level one, by the way. We didn't talk about that. So there's a little more trait value, higher threshold of healing, as well as a faster healing amount. It is possession from our Sylvanas. We'll actually have explosive arrows from Hanzo. Clear out the waves a little bit faster. Incinerator Gauntlets for our Blaze. Potion of Shielding for Decker. Diablo's going to go Sacrificial Soul, so he's going to get 10 souls per charge. So, or I guess when he gets a stun, excuse me, not, not per charge. You also get 20 armor, and then at 100 souls, you get 40 armor. Nice scatter into Cure right there. 15 stack for Nano, who wants to chase a little bit further. Sonic Arrow for the Vision. And Kira will get the face shift from Brightwing. First objective phase is up and available. Muradin is soaking up bottom lane. Doesn't look like we've seen much loss of soak on either side. Sorry, there's like a 
shooting pain in my leg right now. Ow. Ow. It's like just like just in my like the front of my uh the front of my calf, like near my shin almost. It was really weird, like where the muscle wraps around. I'm feeling different pains because a lot of the uh a lot of the inflammation is starting to go down from from my uh medication I was given by the doctor. So I'm start I think I'm starting to feel like some of the other sorenesses that that have formed, so still recovering, but you know what? I will I will take this pain over the pain I had a couple days ago before I was before they quadrupled my dosage. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Nano. Nano, what? Dude, that's scatter. Are you serious? First objective phase, pretty much full. Uh, I think that was actually fully channeled uninterrupted. Vinland Raiders. Kira gets the phase shift while Paka's able to haunting wave away. Bro, that's scatter. That's scatter. That's scatter. Beautiful from Nano. All right. Well, Vinland Raiders coming out swinging here. They did lose a. They did lose some early game fights, but seems like those were just some warm up deaths here on on map number one of this third best of three. Sa Emerald, by the way, level seven for Deckard Kane. Does have the Sapphire level one. Seventy five percent healing reduction for four seconds. That is huge. Thirty second cooldown on that bad boy. Gia getting poked at by Hanzo. Diablo initiates with the Shadow Charge. Sko getting a little bit low here. Now Holpaka goes in. Polymorph by the Brightwing. Gia is the target, but Ken... No! Sylvanas goes in, but Zeratul will be picked off. There is a trade. Sko getting a little bit low. The Soothing Mist activated by Make. Diablo rooted, but is he booted? Polymorph onto Murden forces him to Dwarf Toss out. What is this map number one? Good little fights here and there, but some unforced errors as well. Savannah's a little hungry for that kill. Unfortunately, she will be picked off. Dream Shot for the Brightwing. Could see Hush later on, but Dream Shot's a nice way to delay out the objective phase. You also get some other value, I forget, from the center. Uh, reduces the cooldown to... Wait, reduces its cooldown to two seconds. Not by two. It's a big difference. A little more spam ability with that. Uh, doesn't... Well, hold on a second. Doesn't Brightwing get other values from that? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Arcane Flare, 149, Center... So oh, right, 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 right. That's what it is. Okay. It's the so the Soothing Miss passive instantly heal... Act uh, The Soothing Miss activates. So essentially you could get like a heal every two seconds if you're landing that. Lop. Yeah, cool. So I thought maybe I misunderstood it, but no, I had it right. Zeratul currently in a fight with Blaze. Kira voids. Wait, Kira, Kira juked me right there. Kira actually avoided the apocalypse, and I was like, wait a minute. Diablo's on Kira's team. There was a kill on Decker Kane. Looks like the apocalypse combo was uh, more of a fight in mid, so we did miss that. I apologize. Let's take him back. Legion TD. Oh, man, I used to play so much of that in college in uh, Warcraft 3. Like, I remember my roommate and I, like, we had our builds memorized. And then there was a point where we actually had, uh, we had a, we had a notebook that was full of, not really a notebook, but it was like a sheet that was full of every single wave and what their, like, armors and stuff like that were. Dude, we used to play so, my roommate and I, freshman year of college, during the winter semester, we played an obscene amount of uh, Legion TD in uh, Warcraft 3. And as I said, like, we had, like, a build memorized and everything. Like, ah, oh. Legion TD's fun. I know they made, like, a standalone game for it. I never checked it out. Alrighty. So, 13s are almost here, way faster to the side of the Swedish pensioners. 4 to 4 in kills, but let's see. Actually, the heroic experience is very 
equal. It's the minion experience that's way different between the two teams. A little bit of possession. Kira just jumps in. Pressures Hopaka a little bit. Uh-oh, Kira! Tries to go in for the big burst onto Savannah and can't achieve the kill. Riptire from Junkrat. Here comes an Apocalypse from Diablo. Savannah will be picked off by the Zeratul, but Zeratul is a little too aggressive up in that top lane, and he gets taken down by the Nexus forces. So Kira will trade in top. <clears throat> Legion TD2. It's good. Is it free? Oops. Almost spilled my tea right there. Stormbolt as Diablo goes in for the Shadow Charge. Nicely done from twice on Muradin. Max Passion in the book. Bush gets gets the mark on Deckard Kane. Some Junkrat poke here and there. Sylvanas is back from death. She's chasing in. There's a root from Deckard Kane and a Chattering Teeth from Junkrat. Back in the top lane, Kira is rotated up here, pressuring onto Sven. Bunker is available if Sven wants it. Doesn't seem like he's really too concerned. He's gonna throw down an oil slick. He's gonna heal up, hit the jet propulsion onto Kira. Sorry, I was just double checking to make sure what blaze took at level 13 in its collision course. Sven heals up a little bit. Dude, do you know how much you'd heal if you had Grilling Killer right there? Unfortunately, I missed the Savannah skill on Brightwing and bottom lane. Junkrat has uh, summoned his Riptire. Decker Kane will take a chunk of damage, but he's fine. Malfeels used the inevitable end self cleanse level 13. 2999. Mm. I'd rather if it, if it costs money, I'd rather play something else. I'd rather spend that money on like Blasphemous 2 or something. Alrighty, so we get a little bit of poke onto Gia. Skog is gonna get the phase shift from Brightwing. Second objective phase. That's an apocalypse from Diablo. Sapphire, or excuse me, Emerald applied. Hanzo goes down. Kira jumps into the back line. He'll be able to get that kill. It's a double kill quickly to the side of the Swedish pensioners. While Max Passion gets a last rights onto Sylvanas, but it's not enough. Apply death sentence to an enemy hero that uh, after two seconds deals damage equal to 50% of their missing health. I feel like a lot of us don't understand last rites very well. I've seen some last rites in some of my Storm League games go out, and I'm like, yeah, that ain't how that works, homie. That ain't how that works. Like, characters need to be around, like, a quarter of their HP realistically. For last rites, characters need to be around a quarter. I think a lot of people look at it and be like, oh, they're at 50. And I I'm not saying that Max Passion doesn't understand this. It's just this is my little PSA because I feel like I've I've seen Malfeo players in different leagues, uh, you know, like Heroes Lounge and NGS, and they they see an enemy hero at fifty percent, or maybe a viewer is just like, oh, they're fifty percent, throw the last rites. Like, no, 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 dude, it's fifty percent of the missing health. You need them at like twenty five percent. Warcraft three uh, TD maps got me through the second deployment, dude. Oh man. The amount of uh, tower defense, like Winter Maul, oh my god. The amount of time, like, I sunk some time in Legion TD. I have sunk, I would say, days into Winter Maul. Like, the different Winter Mauls out there. Oh, I love those. You build a little maze of tower defense things, and you throw on a movie on the other monitor or a YouTube video or something. You just chill out. 33% ma- Yeah, 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 I see what you mean. <laughs> I absolutely- The way I always treat it, like, if I ever get, like, Malthy on an ARAM and I'm doing last right stuff, I just look at it, like, 25%, because I'm just- That's- that's the way that I'm, like, I know I'm good if I'm there at 25%, but you are correct to start with 33. If we are doing proper meth, which we know I never do- Oh, the fight still continues in top lane. Objective phase will be cleared out. Eight to seven in kills. Kira pushes up mid lane with Zeratul. He's gonna start, uh, he should be fine. Should, should be fine. 
Blinks back, blinks back in. Face shift from Brightwing. And Bright, uh, excuse me, Sylvanas works on this camp on the right hand side. Left side camp's already grabbed. I'm horrible at math. I always think about this because we talk about this on stream from time to time. Like, if you ever went, if you could ever, like, do it all over again, go back to university, study something different, what would it be? And I always say education, but then I always think to myself, like, what would I actually teach? I'm horrible at math. My English is garbage. <laughs> I would not be a good gym teacher. <laughs> or maybe I would be a fantastic gym teacher. I could, could uh, you know what? I could teach computer courses. I don't think I could be an art teacher. I don't have enough skills in different departments to be able to do that. Nice wailing arrow. I was wondering if Zeratu was going to be able to get away, but Savannah Sopaka kind of reads the trajectory, throws the wailing arrow out, and gets the activation as Zeratu was blinking away. That is, that is a, either that was a perfect little accident or Hopaka's just got mechanical prowess out of his ears. I also think I could teach history. That's the other thing I think I could teach. Like if I went back to school and I had to be a teacher for something, I think it'd be history. Mythology specifically is like my favorite thing. And that was actually one of the big things that, funny enough, that was actually like one of the big focuses when I was in the sixth grade, when I went to Catholic school. My history class was really, really focused on a lot of the mythology. Arrow goes wide through the enemies. We got a rip tire from Junkrat connecting onto a few, but it's still Diablo to go down. Last rights is going, what? Murden didn't get inside the bunker in time? That is BS in my opinion, but either way, it's gonna be a bit of a, Oh wait, hold on, Savannah's is trying to mop up the fight. Gia, that's Will the Forsaken activated to close the distance. Here comes Zerto, he's gonna try and get the counter kill. That will be a Hellgate in from Diablo. And once again, Hopaka, just a little too aggressive, gets picked off. And oh, has everything fallen apart here? The objective phase is gonna go back over to the side of, or excuse me, will be uh, stalled out here. Hunter Orc is low, gets a potion. I think, nope, nope, Zeratul's here. Zeratul's here. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, boss does work its way onto the keep, and that'll be 50% of that. What a weird game number one, man. What a very weird game number one in this best of three in the lower bracket semifinal. What's up, B-Crazy? How you doing today, bud? Happy Sunday to you. I think I said Saturday earlier. I apologize. Storm, excuse me, uh, Dragon's Arrow into Sonic Arrow. Cures rotated up here. Bunker activated by Blaze. Polymorph on to Nano, who gets inside the bunker in time. But here's the issue. There's a Riptire knocking on the door. Cure will go down. Nano will be traded. Objective phase still going on. Chattering teeth are going to delay some things out here and there. Sven, Jet Propulsion, throws down the Twin Flames and the O Slick. Gets a little bit of healing, and the big balls of Junkrat can't get the kill. Meanwhile, Diablo has delayed out the objective enough. But here's the thing, Brightwing's gone down. Zeratul's picked up. G is going to get hammered in the face with a Storm Bolt of Muradin. Level 20s we didn't talk about really quickly. We do have that Warp, or the Shadow Stride. We do have the Malthiel buyback, which, uh, what is he sitting at on that timer right now? 62 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 62 seconds, so 18 minutes in game time. And uh, respect the elderly for, for Deckard. We don't have Fortified Bunker on Blaze. It is, it's, it's Burn Notice. There's, a, there's something, something, something. Burn Notice always loses games. Just kidding. Maybe. That was actually a meme in CCL. There was, there was like a couple games where a Blaze took Burn Notice and that was the game they would lose. <laughs> All right, so Malthiel, hard thing out of bottom. Just gonna rejoin his allies. I think just soaked up a bit and pushed up a bit of bottom lane. Looks like uh, Vinland Raiders waits for these waves to crash. So during that time, let's go ahead and take a look at the damage and stuff if, I, if you are curious. Actually, let's cycle through everything. Hopefully all is well. Uh, yeah, feeling um, as I as I said earlier, the my doctor has quadrupled my dosage for 
uh, my joint medication, the the pain joint. I'm I'm taking Celebrex basically. It's it's for for joint pain. And uh, I was on 100 milligrams. They've upped me to 400. So yeah, they've quadrupled my dosage. <laughs> and it's uh, it's not narcotic. Like I'm not sitting here like high out of my mind or anything like that. No. Nope. That would be really diff. That'd be such a challenge. You take a. You take a. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's let's focus back in on the game. Riptire from Junkrat says hello to a few. No extra oomph level twenty. Anzo's arrow goes wide. Camp in mid lane is pushing in. It is still pretty healthy. But yeah, hips feeling a little bit better because we have more medication. Okay, possession steal away a few minions. Cure gets tagged by Sylvanas. He's gonna blink away. Bullseye gets the reveal on his direction. Twice is still rotating down here. You know what to do. Oh, blinks right through the Stormbolt animation, or kinda. Boston top lane will be delayed out for a moment here. Looks like Junkrat gets a quick clear onto the. Nope. No, they're just gonna delay this out for just a touch. Okay, so Diablo Soulstone finished out. Hellgate is Hellgate off cooldown. I know Malfield's got buyback. Hellgate's off cooldown. Um, just looking at other stuff really quickly. Rewinds up and available for Muradin. Boss will be cleared out. I think they're gonna clear out like 75 or so percent of the boss, and they'll let the structure do the rest. Get themselves over to this camp. Oh, my minimap is all broken. Both of the camps are axes. Both of the camps are blue axes. I broke I broke the minimap by accident somehow, some way. Huh, yeah, I broke the minimap chat. <laughs> Never done that before. Apocalypse activated by Diablo. Zeratul on the right hand side, burning through Nano's health bar. A dragon zero from Hanzo goes wide. Stay well and listen. Interrupted by a rip tire from Junkrat. Sven goes in for a big jump propulsion. Does take down the Malfeo, who can buy back in, and he will do that immediately here. The objective phase once again over to the side of uh, Swedish pensioners. Blaze does go down. This is looking like it might be a push to end. I took a whole lot of Gabapentin one day for uh, MS, and you know all about joint nerf. Pe yeah. Gabapentin is, uh, my mom actually takes Gabapentin. She, but she doesn't take like a big dosage, but she takes like one every night because she has a bunch of joint pain and stuff like that from, from other stuff. I mean, Bandit, Bandit has taken Gabapentin. When he had his tooth removed, they gave him Gabapentin and he was high as a kite. Oh my God, Bandit was so, like when Bandit got his tooth removed and stuff like that and I brought him back and he was still all like dosed up from the anesthesia. I have a photo of him and he's just he's just so derpy. He's so cute. All right. Well, map number 1 goes over to the side of the Swedish pensioners. It was looking a little hairy here and there, but they do come out on top and they will take map number 1 in the lower bracket semifinal. And I, and, the, and that's the other thing too, like it, it like you just got to you have to really find what works for you. Cuz obviously everyone's body is different. He was, he was just so cute. Like he was just like, he didn't do anything stupid. Like he wasn't like in like vomiting or anything like he just, he was just sitting there like looking all derpy and high. And I was like, you're adorable, bud. You're so cute. But I mean like, so that, so, so I, I've said this before. Uh, I, I had uh, my wisdom teeth taken out when I was like 15, 16. And uh, before I got like, a lot of my other friends had had their wisdom teeth out already, and they all like took uh they all got Viking, and they were telling me stories about how like oh dude I was so high I couldn't even watch this movie it was I, there was this one part of this movie where the camera spins and I fell off the couch because I was so fucked up and I was like man oh wow all right I've never had drugs before I didn't I didn't I didn't smoke weed or anything like that I didn't smoke weed till I was in my twenties. All right, the ads are gonna finish up. We're going to Towers of Doom for map number two in our. Lower bracket semifinal. I am getting sweaty today. I am hot. 
And I don't know if I want to take off my sweater or just turn down the heat. Oh, I'm all sweaty all of a sudden. Towers of Doom map number two in our third best of three of the day. Lower bracket semifinal after this is the lower bracket final. After that is the grand finals. After that, I make some chicken wings for myself. Maev will be the first pick on the right-hand side. Uh, or excuse me, on uh, banned for the right-hand side. This will be Towers of Doom chosen by the Swedish pensioners while Vinland Raiders opted in for first pick priority. Uh, this is Meta Madness style of draft, so the previous 10 heroes we just saw are unavailable for this next map. And uh, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into a uh, fun, fantastic day. Or I guess another fun, fantastic series. Map? Map. All right, give me one second. I'm too sweaty. Too sweaty. Too sweaty. Too anxious. Ugh. Alrighty, there we go. That's better. Whew. She's a little too hot today. So, Hogger will be banned away. Lucia banned away. Alright, do we get a... Has Genji been played yet? Genji was not played. Could see a target ban onto him. The Haka hasn't been played in this series yet, I don't believe, right? Was he played in the last game? I'm drawing a blank. No, he wasn't. It was Malthea when I talked about it. Target ban onto a Sven Samuro. But as I said, this is a fantastic map for the dinosaur. It could be a priority first pick for them. Johanna is up and available as well. They want to just get a sturdy tank to start out. Hmm. They go Genji. Okay, like honestly at this point it's just like what flavor they want. Really can't, really can't do a lot of draft analysis outside of like, okay, it's meta madness, there's some missing heroes, but we can do our best to talk about the map draft and what we have available, but either either way, Genji start. By the way, Chogol is up and available, just saying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, chat. I'm just saying. I'm just saying really, really quickly that Chogal is up and available. I mean, it's a good map for him. You've got a Genji already. Do it. Do it to it. Do it, do it, do it. I believe in you, Vinland Raiders. Do you believe in yourself? Okay, they can still choke all! Just kidding. Uh, Genji, Vikings, Johanna. I actually believe, I actually believe Cho'Gall is winless in Banshee Cup. I do believe Cho'Gall is winless. I don't think he's actually won a single game. I believe I've seen three games of Cho'Gall. Oh, there was a, there was a game yesterday that I know. Uh, which one was it? Was it this one? No. Where's my slider? There we go. Uh, is it this? Yeah, Cho'Gall didn't win yesterday either. Cho'Gall was played on Garden of Terror and it lost. They must be picking the wrong talents. That, that, that must be it. Ban from the right hand side. Obviously you want to ban Butcher because you have a Lost Vikings on your team. For two seconds, my brain registered, not even two, for like a split second, my brain registered that as, as Butcher, and I was like, ha, huh, that's funny. Um, no, Garrosh will be the one to be banned away. I'm trying to think. Illidan's not actually, like, unironically, Illidan's actually really good for this map, also up against the Vikings. Illidan's, like, not a bad idea. You could actually Abathur into that. No, they're gonna go for resets with Li Ming, okay. lies. Our lord and savior Cho'Gall would never lose. Yeah, you know what? It must have been the team throwing for stats. Last two picks coming out from the right-hand side. Gonna need a healer. Uh, Anduin's up and available, no? Is... Anduin wasn't played in the last game, was he? 
There was a bright wing and something else. If Anduin's up and available, I'd love to see the Andy here. Ooh, that's not too bad from Vinland Raiders. That's not too bad. Bless Shield, Chastise, Chromie Burst, Condemn, Light Bomb as well. Some some decent some decent setup for that. Last pick on the left hand side. I still don't hate the idea of the Illidan. I still do not hate the idea of an Illidan here. It's a green Illidan. Green Illidan will be picked up. Uh, I actually really li I like both drafts. Uh, we'll see how things are going to shape up, but good draft from both sides. The Chromie is kind of the X factor. Actually, the Vikings are a bit of an X factor as well. Genji is quite literally an X factor with X strike. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. And then we're going to do it the Towers of Doom way. Oh, some good tea. That is some tasty tea, chat. Prepare yourself for battle, heroes. West side of the map, up in this best of three series in the lower bracket semifinal, trying to move their way into the next best of three in the lower bracket finals. Up next, we've got the Swedish Pensioners. Max Passion on your Thrall, Cure Dahaka, Skog Varian, Make on the Rhaegar, and Gia will play the side saddled Li Ming. Right hand side, looking to put one up on the board. We got the Finland Raiders. Sven playing the Olaf, Balog, Eric, Lost Vikings. Nanochromy, twice on Johanna, Hopaka, Genji, and Hunter Urk will be your Anduin. Varian immediately charges in, sees his son, and that's about it. Li Ming throwing in some arcane orbs here and there. Genji looking to harass onto the backline with some shurikens early on. Varian tries to charge. He's going to be stopped by a time trap. Deep breathing level one for the Chromie as the Vikings are going to start splitting up towards top lane. Rhaegar already in bottom lane. And with that, let's go ahead and start our prediction. Ladies and gentlemen, who's going to win map number two? Will this be a 2-0 series from the side of Swedish Pensioners? Or can Vinland Raiders move us into a map number three? Eric is going to go down first. Kira will get that quarter kill. It's going to be 74 eight, uh, extra experience. Yeah, quarter kill. Diva's the Diva's the half kill. I don't know why I, I don't know why I mix her up with the Vikings. Thrall is going to sunder away Anduin from pulling a Tart Taunt one shot. All right. You like the team should be a good match. It should be. It should be indeed. We got about 5k on Vinland Raiders. Any Swedish pensioner believers? I guess it's four Swedish pensioners. And a dude from America. <laughs> Alrighty, so Thrall in mid lane. Looks like they're gonna have Dahaka just chill in top for the time being. Not gonna do double soak duties. He actually is tissue regeneration level one, so I do believe this is gonna be a Thrall mid lane, Dahaka top lane sort of deal to manage. Down over here in bottom, Li Ming and friends are trying their best to poke onto this wave. Genji jumps in as well. Level 4 is here, and he's going to pick up a few Shuriken stacks on that Shuriken Mastery. Varian getting a little bit low. Skog does have the Taunt level 4. Dahaka is going to go into Hero Stalker level 4. And I actually, I would like, I, I know, I know Feeding Frenzy is like super duper amazing, but I would actually like to see the Symbiosis at level 4, or level 7. Get cooldown reduction from hitting enemy heroes with your Dark Swarm, which then synergizes with the Hero Stalker. And then that all goes into your tissue regeneration. Okay. Siege continues in top lane. The gate of the fort front gate goes down. Taunt onto a Viking. Goodbye, Olaf. That is 0.75 of a kill so far. Genji jumps in. Make is the target. 
Little self cast chain heal. Viking in bottom lane is gonna get the channel down over there. Make getting pulled back into the enemy team. The Chastise does connect and Johanna gets the kill. Dahaka will brush stock in, looking for the team fight. Gonna go for Anduin here. And uh there oh, time stop on Anduin saves. Drag, oh wait, maybe it didn't. Li Ming gets a reset, Skog does go down. Thrall on the right hand side is uh brawling up against an Olaf. It seems like he'll give that away. So eight shots right into the core of the Swedish pensioners. The, the joke is that in America we don't have pensions. Because no one cares about retirement here. Feeding Frenzy level seven, so they won't do the uh, symbiosis. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Feeding Frenzy's so good. Cooldown reduction on your drag by 1.5 seconds, and you increase the drag duration by 0.5 seconds, which moves it to a 2.25 second drag. That is insane. Like, baseline, it's 1.75, and you're increasing it to 2.25. Vikings in the top are going to get this camp. I don't know if Kier's going to be able to check this in time, or if he has the, the, the knowledge to check it. Back down in bottom lane, though. Taunt from Varian onto the Genji. He's going to activate the Deflect. Temporal Loop onto Rhaegar. And he's running right in the direction of those Morbius loops. That is another kill for Chromie and friends as the Sappers rain in through bottom lane. What's up, Hans? Good morning, bud. A Viking will be lost in top lane. I think the Sappers are not getting any value whatsoever. Time trap on to Thrall as he's rotating down. Dahaka brush talks in to join the allies after clearing out that top lane. Thrall doing his best to back away. And the deflect from Genji doesn't get any sort of spread or splash damage kill. Twice a little bit low here. Is there a drag from Dahaka? Varian goes in for the charge and the taunt. Dahaka slowed a little bit. Li Ming's the one to go down. Jahana traded here. Thrall will be picked off. Can they get a kill into Holpaka? Rhaegar's back from death. Objective phase is up and available. Top left and right of the map. A full HP nano is going to be reduced to nothing as Varian goes in. Says hello to his son. And that's about it. The altars have risen. Activate them now. Balog gets the right hand side. Eric is harassing on the left. He does have, uh, it's not spy games. It's Eric the Swift at level four. Cure maybe lands a drag here. Tags the boss. Doesn't have that movement speed augment. And Gia decides, I don't want to, I don't think I'll get a reset off of that Viking. Let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers. Varian level 10, by the way, will be shield wall. As we cycle through the other numbers, Light Bomb for the Anduin at level 10. Looks like he used uh, that. Genji also used X Strike. Johanna with the Bless Shield activated. We have a kill into the Li Ming. There was a cleanse onto Max Passion. Avoids the Temporal Loop. Opaka is going to hearth out for full. All right, Shield Wall, as I mentioned, for Varian. Sundering for the Thrall. Ancestor Healing on our Rhaegar. We've got a. Isolation to Haka and Wave of Force Li Ming. On the opposing side, Light Bomb, play again, X Strike, Bless Shield, and Temporal Loop. They're all in mid lane, gets hit with an X Strike. Genji goes in with the Swift Strike and the Deflect, and it's actually Eric who snipes the kill, I believe, with that last shot on the Thrall. Invade onto the camp here. Dahaka's done with his uh, tissue regeneration. Light bomb combo onto the Rhaegar. Can't do nothing about that. Now Genji's uh, chasing down Li Ming, sticking to her like glue on paper. I don't know. I got, I got no analogies today. Chastise thrown out. Vinland Raiders. Nine to four in kills. Vikings have only died four times, so once. And bottom lane bell tower goes over to the side of Vinland Raiders. They are looking pretty good in map number two. This Vikings composition does not seem to have any sort of Achilles heel. I guess Achilles heels. Uh. So I've never noticed that Balog's little knot, if you're kind of looking at it at the right angle, looks like something else. Just saying. Just saying, if you look at that knot at a different angle, I, I, for like two seconds, I was like, wait a second, what? Ah, right, yes. For a moment. 
Condemned from twice, pulls in the wave. The sappers are here. Li Ming and friends get a clear on one. Light bomb from uh, Anduin onto Genji. They're focusing onto the Rhaegar with a blood shield as well. Two sappers make it over the wall. I mean, at this point, on the side of uh, Swedish pensioners, it just the comms have to be. More sappers over the wall? How quickly the tide turns. Okay. Well then. Um. Huh. This is awkward. Varian did go juggernaut level 13. 4%. Of the maximum health is is going to be uh, damage from the charge. Eighteen to thirty-two. <laughs> Tower is a doom, looking really good for Vinland Raiders. Vikings really only have two globes. It was fixed before. Maybe it's broken. Vikings have thirty-eight globes. It is broken again. It was working perfectly yesterday. We had two Vikings games actually. We had two Viking games yesterday, and I remember it working perfectly fine. I don't know, maybe it had to do with who I click on early. Because whenever I start a game, I always click on someone, so I have the portrait thingy if I want to swap to a vision. So maybe it has to do with that, not 100% sure. Light bomb. Okay, Make gets the Ancestral this time. Sundering from Thrall does go out. Three shots actually rain into the core of Vinland Raiders. And Li Ming is starting to pop off right now. That's another reset for Li Ming. She doesn't get one off of that, but hey, Dahaka finds the kill. And this will be six shots into the enemy team core. 18 to 26. And the bottom lane bell tower will be regained to the side of Swedish pensioners. Li Ming with a pop off moment right there. Dahaka makes his way back into top. Check really quickly if Kira's got uh, brush stock in five seconds he will. But yes, the Viking globe count is currently at 40. Could you imagine if the Vikings only got two globes so far on Towers of Doom? That'd be ridiculous. All right, 16's a piece, six to 11 in our kills. Thrall is gonna go Thunderstorm level 16. Varian with the banner of Dalaran. We've got the elongated tongue on Dahaka, Earth Grasp Totem, and last but not least, the Mirror Ball. Reflect game for De Genji here at level 16. Deflect also deals additional 33% of the damage blocked. Charge, taunt, onto the Johanna. A Viking in the back line. There's going to be a Genji X Strike to close the distance further. Blood Shield from the Johanna goes out, and Li Ming is the first target. Now, Make, no Ancestral available for two seconds. He will be picked off as well. And what was looking like a potential moment of turnaround for the Swedish pensioners looks like they're going to be going back to the drawing board to figure out how they can roll their way back into this game. Sundering from the Thrall pushes back the enemy, saves the Varian. But triple altar phase coming up. I expect this to be 12 shots into the core of Swedish pensioners. Unless this bell tower gets converted in the next 10 seconds or so. So 15 potential shots. Thrall and Varian go to the left-hand side. Eric's going to delay this out for a little bit. Never mind, he won't. Five shots go left, and this is a lot less value than I was anticipating. Cure's over here. Max Passion does go down to the Genji. Opaka jumping onto Cure right now. Large and in charge from Olaf will come through. Cure is going to throw the isolation onto just one Viking. Genji with the light bomb, X Strike, Swift Strike, everything in to jump onto the Rhaegar. Five more shots go into the core of the Swedish Pensioners. Eight HP to the 23 of Vinland Raiders. And as I said earlier, this uh, this Viking composition is just miserable to deal with. Olaf charges through the gate, and I think he's going to die to tower shots. He's going to jump for a moment. Can he make it through the sidewall? No. Li Ming gets a reset. Going to try and pop off onto Genji, who activates the deflect and is able to swift strike away. 
We're 12 plus minutes in. The center teleport has opened up and the tower values have been increased to keep values. Oh boy, chat. 8 to 23. 20 Talenteers on the way for Vinland Raiders. I think this is a map 3. I think we're heading to a map 3. Boss has started. Nobody's around to really... Well, Thrall's around, but he's not going to step into this. Leaving Rhaegar still in bottom lane, working on that bell tower conversion. Single altar in the center of the map could be winning moment for Vinland Raiders to take us to that map number three. Can they do it? One bell tower away. But this is also where the turnaround moments often happen. But it's 20 talent to your advantage. Like, Living Weapon, Fury of the Storm, Radiating Faith, Censure, and Stuck in a Loop, which was already picked up two levels ago. I mean, realistically, they could just give this as well. They don't need... If they if they feel the positioning is bad on the side of Inland Raiders, they just give this away. Sven will be lost. Nope. Nope. Hunter Orc with the channel. Doesn't seem like there's an interrupt just yet. Okay. One will come through. Chromie throwing a bit of sand out as well. Vikings pushing up top. Viking in mid soaking up. Taunt from Varian into the Anduin, throws down the light bomb. Self, oh my god, the Ancestral comes through onto Gia just in time. Chromie's so very low, the Temporal Loop will come through, but now Li Ming is starting to pop off over here. Varian wants to chase onto Nano, but can't find the Lion's Fang. Meanwhile, Viking on the left-hand side does go down. That's a reset for Li Ming as well. She's time stopped. That's gonna be Genji deflecting, deflecting, X-striking, and he's dead. Dahaka goes to top lane. Varian starts clearing out the left-hand side. One Viking to delay again. Sven's gonna lose his Eric. Thrall grabs this, uh, this, uh, they're gonna, are they, is Make, yeah, he did restart the channel, so this will be four shots into the enemy team core. All right, four to 19. Boss is up in three minutes. That's 18.30 in-game time. 16, 17, 18, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was doing I was doing math weird in my head all of a sudden. They're looking at this Tahaka in the top lane. He's gonna be temporal loop, stuck in a loop. Does he have a burrow? Does he have essence? Can Kier get away? Kier does go down. He does get some decent damage on that bell tower in the top lane. On the opposing side for the 20s that finally did come through. Repulsion, isolation, contagion. We have the upgrade for. Uh, for the Ancestor healing. Life Bomb, Earth, Sundering from the Thrall pushes back the enemy, but he's still dead. He is still dead from a- Oh, he's not dead! Dawn from Varian, and that's a dead Genji! Yo, what if Swedish pensioners get the barrage going? Top lane bell tower is like no damage to really do. Mid lane, it's opened up. Dude, you get a couple kills here. Ancestor healing goes out. They want to dive underneath this tower. They're going to try and take down Nano. Nano so very low. That's a Sundering from the Thrall. It's a reset for the Li Ming. Make backs away. Doesn't go down to the Sand of Chromie as she had some lingering damage on the battleground. Twice is going to get condemned. That's a reset for Gia who throws in another combo. Gia goes down to the Vikings. As it should be. But now Dahaka's back in the mix. A Viking is pushing up top lane. Dahaka's going to go for the channel. No, he's just going to sit around the channel area. What? What? Eric, don't do it. Don't do it. They do have play again. Drag. That was actually really cool, Sven. Sven swapped to another Viking because I don't think Eric could activate the jump, but I think Sven on Baylog could. Barrage has begun! Bombardment has begun. I believe after six shots, the speed increases from one shot to the shots being at the halfway mark. So that's two. Genji gonna try and take down the top lane bell tower. 
I think that was three or four shots went out total, but either way, they're gonna chase down Hopaka, extract to get away, but no! Oh my god, Sapper's over the wall, but Li Ming is here, okay. Boss, 27 seconds, chat. Boss up in 27 seconds. Genji down for 42. Baylog still in top. Cure is gonna pop his essence really quickly. That's a drag onto Johanna. Sundering from the throw will come out. That's an Eric dead immediately. Leap of Faith saves the Johanna. Boss, you hear that cackle? He's up and available. Do they take this off the map? Does it become a four point game? Looks like yes. Double objective phase coming up next. Four shots are available for either side. Actually, losing this bell tower is actually not good. Yeah, you need both bell towers to win now. Okay, tensions rising. Here, making sure that the back the back cap doesn't happen. Here, making sure the back cap doesn't happen. Viking still over here. A little jump going on. Hunter Orc, delayed out by the Thrall. Dahaka brush stalks in for the flank. Skog very low. Temporal Loop is going to be onto Arvarian. Shield Wall was activated. Ancestor Healing was already used as well. Taunt about to come off a cooldown. X Strike and Bless Shield are available. There's the Light Bomb. They're looking for Rhaegar. Make doesn't get the hit they're looking for. Radiating Faith. Oh, wait, hold on. Thrall gets a pretty decent route. Chastise Piercing Light is finished out. Twice is gonna go down here. No, Twice lives. The healing from Anduin is just enough. One Viking going down could be the pop-off moment for, for Li Ming. Sven gonna try and come in here and that's gonna be a reset. Sundering from Thrall has the World Breaker. One Viking's gone down. Play again is up and available. Second Viking does go down. Third Viking, third Viking, third Viking goes down. All Vikings out. No play again. Genji on the north side, gonna delay. Johanna with one delay with the shield glare. Cure going for the channel. Genji gets a delay. Temporal loop onto somebody, it's Varian. Twice a little bit low. Cure delayed out once again. Sundering up against the wall is huge! But it's not huge enough. That's a good condemn, that's a good condemn. Li Ming does go down. Chromie to be traded. Rhaegar bites on the butt. Vikings up in 15 seconds, or at least one Viking will be. Play again is up and available. Tr Isolation lands! Isolation lands onto Genji! And ladies and gentlemen. Team kill! Hard fought map number three, number two. And Swedish pensioners take us to the lower bracket finals. What a game. Oh, Logan, me too, bud. I've I've had my fair share of Towers of Doom games like that, but I've also had my fair share uh, uh, on the on the losing side. But I've also had my fair share of winning games on uh, like that.